Hi everybody, me Robert here and in this video I'll show you how we build a reverse proxy and SSL automation with Nginx, Docker, Let's Encrypt and Chrome. Are you wondering what's a reverse proxy with SSL encryption and why you actually would need it? Well, it enables you to pass requests to your external server names like www.example.com to your internal services and applications and to provide secure access through the HTTPS protocol. We just released this full automation as a new product, so you either can purchase it at the link down below in the description, or you can watch this video until the end and build it yourself. The product comes as a Docker image with several scripts. It allows you to pass the requests to your services that either can run on your host, in your Docker containers, on your Docker Compose services, or even on other servers. I will show you some examples at the beginning of the video. Before we get started, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell below so that you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. So you know what? Let's get to it! All right, let's assume you've built an app which is running under the address localhost port 3000 and you want to make it publicly available through a server name for which you have a DNS entry yet. In our case this is nft.testcloud.blueinternet.com and for security reasons you want to create an SSL certificate in order to call this address through the HTTPS protocol. With our reverse proxy SSL automation, you can do all of this with just one command. You basically just need to run npm run run start, which creates our reverse proxy docker container, and you pass in your publicly available server name, your upstream URL, which basically is the address under which your app is running internally, and to which the public address gets forwarded. With Enable SSL, you specify if you want to create an SSL certificate for this public server name. And finally, you have to provide your email address. This is required by Let's Encrypt in order to create your SSL certificate. Now we press Enter and run this command. This creates a Docker container and passes the arguments to its entry point. Now we can switch to the browser and refresh the page with the public address. Now we can see that our app is available under its public address and that it has a valid certificate. You also can add additional servers by running npm run run at server. Here we specify another public server name and this time we set the upstream URL to HTTP localhost port 8080. On this port I just have a regular Nginx docker container running. I do not enable SSL in this sample, but I also provide an email address here. Now I press enter and run this command. And this command executed the script in our already running container and created our second server. Now we open our browser again and we can see that our second server name displays the website of our internal Nginx docker container. Now let's take a look at the script that we executed with the first server. The npm run run start command executed the docker run start script. This script takes these four arguments, server name, upstream URL, enable SSL and email address, and it passes it as environment variables to the reverse proxy docker container that we create with docker run. This executes several other scripts inside the docker container but we don't look into these details right now. Here you can see that we mount external volumes to the Docker container in order to store the Nginx configurations and the Let's Encrypt SSL certificates. So the samples that we have seen so far were executed with Docker Run and with Docker Exec respectively in the add server script. But now I want to show you how we can accomplish the same with Docker Compose. 
I stop the reverse proxy container again. I switch into the Docker Compose directory, where I've prepared several other examples for you. Each project directory has a .env file and a Docker Compose file. In the .env file, you can set the same variables that we've provided in the command line before. Additionally, you can provide a Docker image for your upstream service here. These variables are provided to the Docker Compose file when Docker Compose gets executed. And here in the upstream URL, we have to define the same service name that we specify in the Docker Compose file. Now we open the Docker Compose file and here we define two services. The first service is our reverse proxy itself. Here we build our reverse proxy Docker image and here we provide the variables from the .env file to the entry point of our Docker container as environment variables. Like in the Docker run examples, we provide persistent volumes here. In order to be able to access the local host on our host system through our Docker containers, we provide this statement here. And here we specify the second service, which is the upstream service, together with the image uh, from the .env file. Now I open another .env file, which is located in the root directory of our reverse proxy project. And here I activate the docker getting started project, for which we previously created the .env and the docker compose file, so that docker compose knows which project to start. Now all we have to do is to run npm run compose start. This builds the Docker container of the reverse proxy and it starts our upstream service container and our reverse proxy container. In this sample, our server name was localhost and our upstream service was the Docker getting started container. Now we can open our browser window again and enter HTTP localhost for getting started tutorial. Now let's take a look at the heart of our Nginx reverse proxy server which basically is a Docker image that we create with this Docker file. In this Docker file, we derive our reverse proxy image from the original engine X image. And here we install crone, syslog and certbot to this image. We use crone to regularly renew the SSL certificates and to reload the engine X server. And we use certbot to create the certificates in the first place. We also could create separate images for Crone and for Zerbot, but this comes with several other caveats, so I decided to put it into our Nginx reverse proxy uh, image. Here we copy the Docker image directory to the reverse proxy directory in our reverse proxy image. In the image directory is the Nginx templates directory, the scripts directory and the custom Crone tab file. Nginx templates directory contains our Nginx templates for HTTP and HTTPS configurations. The scripts directory contains our custom entry point and several other scripts which are required to do the whole stuff. Here we make the scripts executable and here we define our custom entry point which gets executed when our reverse proxy container gets started. In our custom entry point, we start the crone service and we load our custom crone tab. Here we start the syslog service and finally we execute the entry point of the original Nginx image. Here we are back in our Docker file. At this point, we do not pass the original command to the entry point since this would start Nginx in the foreground. Instead, we call our custom start Nginx script, which basically starts Nginx in the background and does the Nginx configuration. It creates the SSL certificates and finally it restarts Nginx in the foreground. Before the script starts the Nginx server in the foreground, it basically executes the reverse SSL proxy script here 
And this script is a quite big one. It is not just called from the start engine X uh, script with the entry point, but also from the add server script, which in turn is called from outside the container with exec, with Docker exec. It first creates automatically the nginx config files for HTTP, then it creates the SSL certificate, and then it creates the config files for HTTPS, and finally it reloads the nginx server, the reverse proxy itself. Here we create the nginx configuration for HTTP. We utilize elf subs for this purpose, which basically replaces the variables, the environment variables, in the HTTP template. Here we start Nginx in the background. Then we create the SSL certificate with certbot. And then we create the Nginx configuration for HTTPS. Again, we use nfsubs for environment substitution here. And finally, we reload the Nginx server or we stop it depending on its entry status. That's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like and the subscribe button. And thank you for watching.